Hello everybody, uh, JT's Physics and Cycling, video number five. Um, I hope Brad doesn't mind me <laughs> telling this, but he watched that entire MIT lecture on friction by Dr. Levin, and um, he was very curious about it, and I, I, think, I just think that's awesome. But he called me this morning, Brad did, not Dr. Levin, and asked me um, something that he found very curious in that um, um, video or that physics lecture and that is why the <coughs> surface area say of an object that is residing on a, another surface you know there's friction between uh, this object and the uh, surface that it's resting on and um, that friction is going to hold that body in a static position until failure and um, it only matters on the materials, the material of the object uh, and the material of the surface. And it does not matter on the surface area. And Brad found that very, very curious due to his automobile racing uh, background and also his cycling. But to demonstrate what we're talking about here, I'm going to put this piece of clay here on this very slick dry board. And I'm going to give it increasing um, gravitational force until um, there's a force acting downward on that now and it's um, and it's going to reach a point where the uh, uh, friction between the two surfaces fails and the object slides away and that does not depend on the area of the object that that was uh, on the surface now that's important um, to us as cyclists and Brad in particular because he was wondering why um, you know racing vehicles have such wide tires so I told Brad that I did not know the answer why surface area doesn't matter it's very in intuitive um, it seems uh, like um, the surface area should matter but apparently it doesn't and I uh, I um, promise Brad that I will come up with an explanation and I'll offer it in a future video. But let's also um, consider what this means to us as cyclists. I mean, this is a standard racing wheel and a standard, uh, a very nice racing tire. And if you think about it, fully inflated, okay, the tire fully inflated, which is not now, we only have about the area of a dime. Um, actually in contact with the road surface. We have this on our front tire and we have this also on our back tire, but that doesn't really matter. Um, if either tire failed, we would probably end up going down and the forces that we generate um, going through corners and especially in criteriums um, is very significant. Um, and this is this area right here, the area of that rubber and an equal area on the road surface is all that's keeping us up. And uh, so apparently the area of the object that's rolling on the surface doesn't have much bearing. He was also very curious about the video on why it's easier to stay up to keep a bicycle upright when you're moving. And the faster you move, the um, more stable your system or your bicycle system is. And that's because of um, gyroscopic forces, which are very interesting. Um, I'm just, I got that hanging on my thumb. I don't want to get my fingers in the spokes, so I'm, I'm not letting go. But um, this wheel is staying upright all by itself. Um, and that's because of the gyroscopic forces. And that was my point of the uh, sharing that MIT video. Um, you know, you can't just sit on a bicycle that's not moving and expect to stay upright. You can't do it. You'll fall over eventually unless you're really good at track standing. Well, track standing involves many other forces. But it's the rotating mass. It's the rotating mass of the wheel that um, gives you a gyroscopic force that keeps you in, um, that keeps you upright. Now, the two forces of friction that we talked about, um, that we'll talk about in that video are um, the kinetic friction and that's a, that's a, the friction after the object has begun to slide and then there's also um, static 
coefficient of friction, and that is um, that is before the object has begun to slide. So static is before, where we're completely safe and sound after riding on our bicycles, and then kinetic when the object actually um, starts to slide. In other words, the force of friction has failed, and that's when, as uh, Mr. Aaron crashed in, he can attest. Um, we come out with a bunch of alleys. And then, once that uh, force of friction is applied to, uh, and, and that fails, we, are, we also have a lot of friction against our bodies. Anyway, that's video number five. Um, thanks, Brad, very much, and I will have an answer for you. I find that very curious also. Thank you. Bye.